intro music. Yeah. Woohoo. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today, taking a look at some bad crew videos, but also, and honestly, first, I'm really excited about this, another tool that's in development from a, well, a dear friend of mine, Anesius. If you don't know Anesius, she actually does our Smasher Pass editing for us, but also has been coming together with a tool of her own to match some of these other amazing tools coming into the game. Now, while it's not officially released yet, it is something that seems basic and simple, but we've actually needed for quite some time. Now, this tool right here is going to allow you to calculate the amount of faction credits you can get every single day. Now, it's not completed and it's not released yet, hence the coming soon. And I promise the coming soon is not like Scopely coming soon, which takes six freaking months. It's actually going to come soon. But, and a couple of critiques, by the way, for um, uh, the, the right side needs a little bit more yellows, reds, greens, we know, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. But as you can see, I can come over here and I can say, hey, I'm Ops 42, I'm of Adar's tier nine, I've got Borg Prime, and then my recommend or my reputation for Romulan is commended, meaning that I can earn 1,905 credits a day through all of my particular options. There's a couple that you can do plus or minus with the away teams and your Armada chest, but in general, it gives you an idea of what you can earn important to look at things like scouts i mean i had honestly not really messed with scouts for a long time that is what messages are but knowing that i can get 570 more a day if i actually paid attention and did those every day well that's a pretty significant chunk that i could add and if i was actually doing that that's almost 4,000. you know right at 4,000, you know that i could get every week more in faction credits if I simply started doing scouts. So this is going to be a great tool that we can pass around that you can work on now. It's not finished yet. The lowest level it has is level 25. It's like if I set it to, hey, I have no primes, I'm level 25, and my reputation is down at friendly. You know, just a really low level rep. You can see I can still earn 312 a day with none from messages, daily rep, mining, hostiles, and then 50 a day for my Borg refinery as a tier one Vidar. Now, I'm not generally going to recommend people with a tier one Vidar start throwing their probes and everything at this, but it is nice to know that that is there. And this is just going to be a handy tool that when it releases, you won't really have to, you know, you'll just be able to come put in what you have and find out what you need. So I thought that was pretty neat. So shout out to Nisius for putting that together. And if you like it, let me know down in the comment section below, because we want to encourage people when they're creating useful tools for the community. And that's exactly what this is. So let us know what you think and what could make it better down below. And we'll pass along that feedback to her and a big thank you for her putting that together so over here now let's take a look cruise yeah me and you we got to talk and in this video we're going to harp on again proper crewing what i mean by proper crewing is taking crews that um well necessarily maybe aren't bad you can see how they were tinkering with them and then fix them up here and there to make them more presentable we're going to start with this one right here I actually do like where this player was going. The player on the right went T.O.S. Kirk, Zal, or Joe as y'all like me to call him, and then Lorca. So I understand the premise here. Now, whether that premise is a good premise, well, we'll leave that up for you to decide, but let's explain what I think they were trying to do. So T.O.S. Kirk is gonna give you morale plus a damage boost. Makes sense, you're on a Saladin, it punches hard. Then you've got Zal with morale boosting your mitigation up, similar to how you would use five of 10, but you don't need the captain seat for that like you would TOS Kirk. And then Lorca is giving you hull breeze. If you did get a critical, you get an added multiplier on top of that. Here's the tricky thing though. Lorca without running an actual critical build officer like Honor Guard Wharf is pretty pointless uh, just because you can't guarantee you're actually going to get a critical. If you remember, and we can kind of make the smaller and go take a look at the ships, but if you remember, your chance of getting a critical is based on the ship and research that you have actually gone through. So real quick, I'm going to pull up in my background. I'm going to pull up my Valdor, and then what we'll do is we'll minimize our log right here. So, and right now. So if you look over here on the right side, critical chance is only 12%. So little more than one in 10 fights, that's actually going to proc a critical, meaning that your Lorca who's making hull breach really isn't doing much for you. Even if it was Gorkon, not really doing much for you here. So it's kind of a wasted officer slot to the argument that almost anything there would have been better. Honor Guard Wharf without Lorca would have been better and would have resulted in the Vidar losing to the Salada. But instead, the Vidar ends up winning, running Yuki, Kirk, Spock, which is a pretty common OPC run for a lot of Vidars, trying to reduce your shields and then have victory in that way. Next up, I want to take a look at another log real quick and 
This one pains me. I talk about it. Four-star players, please. Spock does not go on your ship. I know we talk about Spock doesn't go on the Enterprise, and it's technically accurate here. Spock doesn't go on this, which is an Enterprise A. But he doesn't go on anything in the four-star. And the reason we've talked about why is shield health. You have so many millions in shield health at these levels, he simply cannot give you enough of a return to justify that as an investment. So if you're wanting to run Spock, you need to run Spock on something like a lower level ship that has less shields, something that has got a few hundred thousand, maybe a million shields, because he simply can't return that much to you in terms of your investment. So let's rotate over to this and take a look at Spock. Illogical. Now mine's maxed out, which I assume the Enterprise A player is as well. Spock restores shields health to 750% of the defense of the officers. Even if you had 50,000, 70,000, you're not regenerating enough to help out your Enterprise A here. To the point that the Katinga almost wins. I know the big players are going to be like, well, the Enterprise A still won, but you end up taking like 40% health off an Enterprise A for a ship that's almost four times stronger. That's the point I'm making. You shouldn't have to worry about that. It's enough to where the Katinga lasted long enough where it completely reduced the shields. And to throw this out there as well, Uhura is basically useless. She's only boosting the base stats of your ship. And that's not helping you on the Enterprise A. Literally, if you want to run an anti-interceptor build, which is what you would typically do with an accuracy officer like Uhura, you would want to run Kang. But because the Enterprise A naturally has so much accuracy, it's going to counter the dodge of almost every ship in the game. You don't need an accuracy boost on Enterprise A to, to go down versus a Pylum or a Kelvin. You're naturally going to have that mitigation already. If it happens to be like a low level Enterprise A and a high level Pylum, then maybe you want to do that just to make sure you get that mitigation to the floor. Better safe than sorry. But in this particular instance, we're definitely seeing this come to a not beneficial arrangement for the Enterprise A. If you like this type of uh, critiquing and this type of learning, thumbs up the video and subscribe. Really appreciate it. So. Let's move on to another one here where we're not going to spend too many time or too much time going after a lot of crews. I really want to kind of focus on here's what's good, here's what works, and then let's send y'all on your way. We don't need Rev to be talking in 13, 15 minute videos, though I do like the new tool. But I want to talk about this. Now, this is a lower level player on their Centurion, rocking Grush, Barrett, and then Chang. So, first point out. Chang is completely useless here. Does nothing for you. He needs hull breach to work. So he has to be paired with something like Lorca or Gorkon. Now we'll note that back in the day, Chang was an officer that we never recommended ever. He just simply did not work very well. And he works in a very unique way in that the weapon that he's going to delay depends on what weapon activates him. So like if you've got three weapons and you know, weapon three is what activates him. If weapon three was going to fire next round, that's when the delay happens. If it's weapon one, and he can push all of them down. So it's not something that's easy to predict necessarily. And then also it's just not necessarily that useful compared to critical builds or multiple shot builds. You know, the other type of builds that you can put into the game. So you got Grush here, which is obviously going to give you a bonus to your war speed and stuff. It's kind of like a minor loadout, but the only thing that makes me think it's not a minor loadout is the fact that they ran Chang. Like they were trying to actually run some type of combat ability there. So let's review that as a whole. Barrett is, well, Barrett's kind of a sore spot, honestly, because Barrett has basically never worked. And maybe they were looking at the officer ability of Barrett, which is right here. Negative to the opponent's whole health at the start of combat if attacked while mining. So maybe they were hoping to play like a trap crew, similar to how you would do TOS checkoff. TOS checkoff is used that way. In fact, I've got TOS checkoff on my Burrell right now for that purpose. I'll show that here in just a second. But here, maybe that they were going for the deceptive weakness, or if they were getting attacked on a mine, maybe they were hoping that would kick in. I'm not sure exactly the reasoning. They attacked a base here and lost significantly, but that, it doesn't actually work. This has actually been one of the broken things in the game for a very long time that they've never fixed. So if you've ever thought about using Barrett for that purpose, don't. And uh, if you'd like to complain about that, our Discord is a great way to complain about that. It's... Yeah, there's several things this game that need to have been fixed from three years ago. Please continue to remind them of that. We do as content creators, the moderators. That's our job, but we need your help. All right. I told you I would show you the ship. So let me just back out of bear here real quick. And then I'll go over to my Burrell, which for a territory capture, I ran this crew right here. So I was running one of my Duras sisters, 
right here and then TOS checkoff and TOS bonus. Now the reason I was running that is Young Genius gives me an impulse speed bonus because I don't expect to win a lot with my Burrell. Yeah, it's four-ish million in power, but on my server, as y'all have seen, I'm like rank 300. So what I'm hoping to do is catch smaller ships thinking they could topple me because of this ability right here. Even though it's a real baby one, it's not good. This is a, this was literally my like dock six. So when attacking while on a capture, my know by a player, checkoff decreases the opponent's damage by 50%. You see very, very crappy low level officer. And then bones right here. Whoops, didn't mean to click that button. Bones over here giving me a boost to attack, defense, and health of all the officers on a ship. And that's what some people run TOS checkoff with a TOS crew. It's like you could see some Meridians that would have like TOS Kirk, uh, TOS Spock, and then TOS checkoff purposefully to catch those Vidars that are trying to hit them. So that works, but that's not what you're hoping. It Baird and Chang just did not work at all. And then of course, Grush does no thing for you at all. So there are three crews, hopefully properly explained to you and hopefully helping out players of all levels. Cause that's kind of my goal. I want to help out everybody that I potentially can because as a content creator, it's my job. Whether you're a whale, free to play, low level, high level, I'm here for you and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want to enjoy me more, I encourage you come check us out on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash RevDeuce. We've been doing Star Trek Fleet Command. We've been doing Escape from Tarkov, Dead by Daylight, Stream Raiders. We've got a lot of stuff going on. And then obviously Patch is coming very soon. So maybe giveaways also. Woo. Fun. Thank you for checking out the channel. Thank you for enjoying, hanging out. And we'll catch you on the next one. Turn off the tunes and roll the boon footage. The bean footage. Bean footage. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.